How can I buy a ton of businesses? That's what we're going to break down for you. How do you buy a business for zero dollars in one week creative financing? So it's almost 2024 and you should know that one of the dumbest things you can do this late in the game is to buy a business using money. I have my partner and friend, ex-student named Curtis on here. He is an experienced lethal business buying and selling machine. And he's going to give you guys, uh, we're going to go through 10 reasons why buying businesses using your actual cash or using somebody else's cash is they, they might be the worst options when it comes to buying businesses. Then we're not just going to leave little homie on stuck. We're going to give you five benefits of using creative seller financing instead of using cash. So, Curtis, uh, once again, give them a little bit of background on yourself um, if, if they're new on the channel. Yeah, Curtis Witt. Uh, I see I bought and sold uh, several businesses over the last couple of years and a uh, veteran and came to look at the, the things that are Quite honestly, the, the things that go wrong in buying a business with cash or even using investor money, as opposed to being very creative and being innovative and being able to do some of the methodologies that we talk about in agency to partner. For sure. So you should be afraid, be very afraid uh, when there's channels out there that's just telling you to leverage your credit or even somebody else's credit. It's, it's nothing wrong with using credit in a lot of situations. But if you have the option to leverage an entirely different uh, mm -hmm. um we're going to get into it because how we're going to show you how to do it, how we show you to do it in agency to partner, it, it doesn't really leave a, a cookie crumb trail back to you as far as liability goes. That's the big word that I want you to do. Everybody watching this right now, get a pen, piece of paper, write down, cancel liabilities and cancel responsibilities too, right? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to hop right in, guys. And I want y'all to know at any point in time that you are uh, uh, ready to do this, you have two professionals. I'm the king of this online digital marketing stuff. I've been on here since 2015. Go all the way back on my channel. You will see me mastering CPA marketing and teaching people how to make money with that. Now we jump to the future and present. And I've been teaching people how to convert their agencies into owners. So you become part owners of these businesses instead of just getting some lame retainer $5,000 a month or getting paid per lead. You can actually be part of the deal when they sell it off if they ever decide to do that. Or we show you a way of selling your digital assets of that company that they built for you using their money. You can sell that off. But we'll get into all of that. Um, Just know that in the first pin comment, there is an opportunity for you to hop on a coaching session with me and Curtis ourselves live for two hours. And we're going to walk you through an entire 10 monetization steps that if you have clients already or if you need partners or whatever, you can plug these 10 monetization steps in instantly. And the result of that, the more you plug in, could lead to you getting to around 200K or more per month. No exaggeration. The more steps you plug in, you can definitely get there. Okay, so now yeah. I'm going to put Curtis in the, uh, the game first. And uh, we're going to start with the 10th reason buying a business using cash is risky or dumb. So we're going to say liquidity constraints. What is yeah. that? So 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 when you buy a business uh, and you use your cash or someone else's cash, you have a you have a, a basic uh, an amount of cash that, that you need to use. Right. And and unfortunately, once you use all that cash now, if you don't have reserves or you don't have something that uh, allows people to um, be able to be ready for things that go wrong because things are going to go wrong, uh, then you have some constraints there. You basically uh, using all of your available money to buy the business, which mm. may leave you with no money to be able to structure the business and do the things that you need to do from a marketing perspective from and take advantage of other opportunities that uh, will certainly come up after you buy that business. OK, sure. that bars right there. Let me give you guys a, a, a real life example of what he's talking about right here. So say, for instance, OK, if you're a younger guy, and you've been sleeping in your mom's basement all your life, and you finally saved up enough money to get the console, the gaming console that you want. But you get the gaming console, you thought it would come with at least one game, like back in the day when you get the Sega. But when you got it, it didn't have no game in there. You spent all the money on the console itself, but now you don't have any money to purchase a game. Right. Imagine if you had somebody else or some creative way to deal with that business. For example, all right, let's say it's PlayStation or Xbox, and you reached out to them and you said, yo, 
Instead of me paying you guys for this PlayStation or this Xbox, I'm going to see how many, watch this, pay attention, how many paying customers would I need to send you in order for you to give me a complimentary console? Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you send them the five or the three people to buy the actual PlayStation console, right? So you didn't come out of any money on your side. Now you do have a little bit of change to go and buy the 20 to $50 video game to put into the console. So these are the type of things that we teach you in agency to partner, leverage, leverage, right. leverage. And now for the grownups, you've been saving up to get the apartment or the house. Now you finally got, like, it, it costs a little bit more than you thought, like, right? So you thought it was just first and last month rent. For some reason, when you got there, they said, yo, there's other people that want this too. And judging off of your past and all of this stuff, we're going to need a deposit too that matches the first and last month. They do that, don't they? So now the money that you were going to use to get the basic furniture, some mattress, maybe a kitchen table and something to sit on in the living room, right? Now you had to use that for the dang on down payment as well. So now you don't have anything to sit on or sleep on. This is why you don't want to use cash. You buy a business. Okay, now the business is blank. You got all these dreams and stuff to grow the business, but now you didn't use all the money that you could have used to grow the business to buy the business. Yeah, man. Right. Absolutely. So let's talk about number two, opportunity cost. And what does that mean? Okay. So it says investing all your funds in a single business may mean missing out on other potentially lucrative investments or diversification opportunities. So check this out, man. Um, what if you have an idea for, let's say, uh, a smoothie shop, right? This is a health smoothie shop, right? And the smoothie shop is actually cheap. It's not that much money, but you think it would be perfect if it was coupled with a gym, like the gym would be next door. So right before people go to the gym, and after they go to the gym, this smoothie place is where they can get their ref they uh they you know refills and, and their energy and all of that extra stuff That's like awesome. that. Right. If you were able to use a creative way to finance the gym, because the gym would be way more expensive than the smoothie shop, then you can take the little remainder or the chump change and go ahead and just slap down on that smoothie shop. And even better, you can use the fact that you own, you can leverage the fact that you're the new owner of the gym to actually acquire the smoothie shop, right? right. Especially right. if they're right close to each other. But if you spend all your money just investing in one, look, if you're not Bill Gates or one of these dudes out here, uh, it's difficult to scale, especially if you wanna scale rapidly, guys. So the way we're trying to teach you guys is to use as much leverage as possible. And cash, yours and other people's, is limited. <laughs> cash is limited. Even if you're, okay, oh, well, yo, Curtis, David, we're using other people's money. Okay, well, unless you have a black book with a whole crap load of rich friends that won't ever cut you off, you're limited. They're going to say, all right, man, I gave you 50K. That's all I can do for you. You're going to go to the bank. They're going to say, then you just buy one. You know, okay, let's see. Let us see what you can do with this. Come back in two, three years, and maybe we'll help you out with that. But how we use creative seller financing, we can buy into without investing our money we can buy into multiple businesses this month just by creating this partnership with this business. All right. So some of you guys watch Cody Sanchez and she talks about seller financing a lot. Uh, then there's other people. I think it's a dude named Roland Frazier. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really know too, too much about that dude. But some people talk about seller financing. But what's unique about me and Curtis is we have the, the advantage of being an agency. So instead of just paying them back with their own uh, 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 profits or whatever, over time or whatever, <laughs> we can make that same deal, but we can speed it up. So it might have took you three years to pay it off and it fully be yours or something. But how we're going to show you to do it, maybe it takes six to eight months or something, right? Depending on like what, what they're asking and everything. All right. So let me go ahead and head off to you. Reduced financial flexibility. What's going on with that, Curtis? Well, that basically that basically falls right into what we just or piggybacks right off of uh, right we what we just talked about, which is the opportunity cost. You reduce your financial flexibility. So if you put all your money down, like you said, let's say you put all your money down on the smoothie shop, you don't have the opportunity to invest in the gym, or vice versa. You put all the money in the gym, you don't have the opportunity to invest in the smoothie shop, and so um, it just reduces your your flexibility. Also, if something goes wrong 
and it will go wrong. <laughs> um, an employee decides once you, once you take over, the employee decides that they want raises now. I mean, they didn't want raises over the last five years, but now, or the owner didn't give them to them, but now they're a a in a dependency on your your business is dependent on them, and now they they got you over a barrel because they want to raise and. The uh, you know now you got to pay them or they leave and they crimp your business or more likely what happens is and this happened to me at least seven times the business owner leaves the business <laughs> owner is the brand in small businesses which means yeah. that they have no obligation to you which means that that revenue is going to drop now you actually still owe that money but the revenue is not what it was projected to be uh, and, really. and you don't have the money to now funnel into marketing because you used all the money to buy the business and Boom. that's a problem that's a huge problem and so you lose the financial flexibility if anything goes wrong everything has to be a hundred percent and we know just living that everything's not going to be a hundred percent you better be ready for the be expecting the unexpected and, but so. and, and so financial flexibility is is very important to have but you reduce it when you are utilizing all of your cash or any of your cash you you we teach you a different way of doing it where the owner actually is using the cash to grow the business there we go come on man let them know see yeah. what 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 y'all have to realize y'all okay let's say you do the the uh, the typical uh <laughs> we want to take the risk away right so let's say you do the typical seller financing business model right um and like 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 Curtis said, you're going to be obligated if you want to buy that business. Whatever y'all agree to on that contract, it doesn't matter if it's a recession. It doesn't matter if Snowvit happens again. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. Remember all those shutdowns and and all of that stuff. You're still responsible for like fulfilling what the contract says if you want to own that business. So if everything shuts down. You're not going to have the revenue to pay them if they say, oh, we want you, you know, paying us 5K a month. You understand? Like 5K a month. OK, well, if y'all got to shut down for months. Right. Then you're going to be super behind on that. Maybe they flexible with you or something. But who wants to be in that position where you got to play catch up? How we're going to be showing you how to do it, guys. You're adding extra digital revenue streams that are online only. No overhead for these businesses that increase their uh, their profits. Uh, and their valuation and everything. So even if something was to shut down offline, these people would still be profitable online and you would still be making money online and you will still be able to uh, follow through with your commitment and not have to slack behind. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, let's 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 go ahead. Lack of leverage, the lack of leverage. What do you think about mm -hmm. that? OK, so lack of leverage, financing a business acquisition with debt allows you to leverage uh, potentially increasing your return on investment using only cash eliminates this leveraging opportunity. OK, so debt is cool. Um, but in this situation, we don't even want the debt right now. OK, this is why being an agency first gives us a leg up on anybody. If you're watching this right now and you're an agency, then you have the leg up on anybody, even if they come with money, because all they could do is come with money. You can increase what they want to sell the business for using what you know and get them a larger exit right that's way more valuable than their asking price right now okay so let's say all right so with a business let's say you want to buy the business with cash all right even if you wanted to use a little bit of debt i wouldn't buy the business itself with cash this is what i would do i would do the creative seller financing on that side of things and then if i still needed some type of loan to i would use debt i would use a loan to speed up me paying it off i would put the money that i borrowed somebody else's money that i borrowed into the marketing and advertising all right but i wouldn't put it into the buying of the business i wouldn't put it into the purchase all right so because like curtis was saying when you do get the loan that's to buy the business and you might not have any left over to actually grow the business so if you know that don't use the money that, that you can get from a loan to buy the business buy the business it's way more creative ways to buy in a business so to use those ways to buy the business and then use the loan to grow the business so absolutely when you just absolutely. use cash you don't have that much leverage you don't have the, the room for all of that go ahead right oh uh potential uh, did you want to say something on it? No, no, I'll, 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 we can go on. That's good. Okay. Okay. So potential for better returns elsewhere. 
Okay, so imagine it's five months ago or so, and you bought a business and the revenue was decreasing, but you saw that Bitcoin was at 17,000, 18,000, and is now uh, almost double that. And you're like, FOMO, oh God, I missed out. You missed out because you used all the cash over there and there was a better return over here. Now your return is almost a negative or you're taking stuff out of your pocket. And believe me, I'm talking from experience. I'm not talking from the fact that uh, this never happened. I'm talking from 13 businesses of experience. And so I understand like when you were talking about the debt, you got to pay that debt back, people. You got to pay that back. And if you didn't structure it right, you could be in huge trouble. And so the, the potential for a better return, you can almost get decent, not not great returns, but, you know, the the treasury bills are now up to five, six percent and and, you know, which is safer than anything else. So if you're not getting at least 10 percent on your return or if you're in the negative, now you're looking at it like, man, I shouldn't have bought this business. I shouldn't have used all this cash or I shouldn't have borrowed this money from these people in order to pay for this business. And then if you use one of the drawbacks from seller finance is if you use seller finance and you aren't able to make the payments, guess what happens? Just like just just like the just like the, um, the choke truck guy, they are repoing the business. They are repoing the business. And so you got to understand the huge risk that you are taking when when you're using debt, seller debt, you know, because. Cody teaches that Roland Frazier is the king of no money down, but there has to be money, especially if you're using a broker, there has to be money involved, but there has to be some money transacted in order to make the business happen. And whether you're putting money up front or whether you're taking on debt, both are have risky propositions and you miss the potential of a better return if you don't do it the way we're talking about. See, that's what I'm talking about, y'all. Like, I know a lot of you guys, like you said, watch Cody. A lot of you guys watch uh Roland and then there's this other guy uh I can't think yeah, of his Dan. name and, uh, you, you have you know five or six uh, yeah, heavy yeah. hitters out there but they're all teaching around taking on the responsibility the accountability yeah. and some form of debt whether whether it's seller finance or whether it's your own cash or whether you're doing it with credit they're all teaching something that still is a risky proposition yeah That's yeah the key. You are taking on huge risk. The way we show you, there's really no risk at all. For sure. For sure. Now, let me clarify. We are not bashing anyone. Absolutely I, like, not. I like Cody for sure. I really like her. Um, Roland, with, you know, despite the nose, <laughs> the red nose, you know what I'm saying? He cool too. My thing is this like we said, we're coming out of risky situations already. If you're an agency owner, is rocky feast of famine months and stuff. You're already in a risky business model right now. If you are trying to leave a nine to five, it's already risky. You can get lose your job at any time. Like stuff sucks, right? But using the way that we teach you is to eliminate the risk. Remember what we told you guys in the last one. Okay, let's say you got a client or a partner. You plug in a 10 monetization methods. They begin building your digital twin, your digital assets, the digital clone of their, their actual business. You're using them to fund that. That's going to increase the valuation of their business in total. But even if they were to cancel working with you guys, it allows you, you still have ownership or at least partial ownership of the digital twin. So you're still going to be making money every single month off every single sale. And if they were to sell the company, you're still good. So this, you're going to partake in that, even if you're not even on good terms talking to them. Right. So so the, the whole goal was to eliminate as much risk as we possibly can. So now let's pay attention. You don't have to put any money down to work with these companies. Matter of fact, they'll probably pay you to build a digital twin for them. Uh, so that's already different. We're not saying we're better than anybody. We're not saying we're better than Roland. We're not saying we're better than Cody. Whatever. Like who you like. But what we are saying is we're giving you a different option. You've heard it all, right? Now, this is something different for you that allows you to not have to put any money into a business, but still uh, uh, um, uh, enjoy, have the privilege of enjoying, having the pleasure of enjoying the, the equity benefits of being a part owner of a business you never even invested in just by bringing to the table your skill sets, helping them grow how much they're worth, helping them accomplish a larger exit or expansion. That's another option. 
Some of these companies are stuck at one or two locations and have no idea how to, to how to expand. What you know how to do or what you will know how to do will allow them that. And as they grow, guess who else grows? Without risk, right? Your name doesn't even have to be on the LLC. Your name doesn't, if they go through a lawsuit, you don't have to be attached to it. None of that stuff. So like how everybody else is teaching you to buy the business, guys, like if, you know, if they go down, stuff can happen to you, right? So, I mean, right. yeah, let's go ahead. So the risk of overvaluing the business, this is a okay. good point. The risk of overvaluing so, the business. So what we have on here, it says, this is a popular belief. It says, when using cash, there might be a temptation to overvalue the business and ignore potential risks. As there's no external financing involved, that might impose a more critical all right, evaluation. So I'm going to break that down as much as I can. And if I get something wrong, because guys, I only sold one business. Curtis, like I told you, I'm the online marketing guy, sales dude. Curtis is the professional as far as buying and selling the businesses. So I'm going to try to tackle this one just based off our, uh, what I know. All right. He's going to, we're not going to just put bad information out there. If I'm wrong, he'll let me know. All right. So we're going to break that down. It says, when you use your own money, guys, to start or run a business, there's a risk that you might think your business uh, or the business is more valuable than it actually is. This is because they're not getting money from others like loans or investors who would usually ask tough questions and make sure you're not overlooking any problems. So using your own cash might make it easier to ignore potential issues and think your uh, uh, the, your business is better off than it is. OK, mm -hmm. it's a bit like being your own boss and not having someone else's uh, someone else double check your decisions. So how did that go? That that went very well. That that was very good. And I, I can tell you from experience, I talked about earlier that 30 percent and, you know, you walk into the door and the, and the other the former owner walks out of the door. Um, you walk in through the outdoor, so to speak, as mm -hmm. Prince used to say. And I am telling you that when that revenue dropped, that revenue is based on your 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 buying price was based on the revenue that was being generated. Mm -hmm. Now the mm -hmm. revenue has dropped dramatically, and yeah. you're but you're still holding the bag. So you're right. When if you are not thinking about that, and unfortunately, I didn't think about that through the first 12 businesses. But if you're not thinking about that and the revenue drops, all of a sudden that business is not worth what you actually are paying for it. And yeah. here's the other thing. The broker will say, well, we have 10, we have five, we have three other people who are interested. That's a damn lie. And I'm going <laughs> to say it. It's a damn lie. They don't have nobody that's interested, you know, <laughs> the, the, and the more time. One of the things that we specialize in is we specialized in being able to turn, you know, buy the business within 60 days. That was mm. a mistake. We should have took six months to buy the business as opposed because the more time goes by, the more desperate the owner becomes. And yeah. the, the price just continues to be reduced. And. Yeah. And honestly, it, it probably after six months, it's reduced to the point of where it actually should be. And so yeah. you have a huge risk of overpaying uh, for the business if you just go in there and let alone all the other the five or six other things that we've talked about um, in terms of using your own money. You have no risk on our side as it relates to that. You have no no, uh, no responsibility, no legal responsibility, no accountability. You know, you don't have those things as it relates to how we're teaching you how to do it. Again, yeah. we're different. It's, it's, it's better, worse or the same. It's different. We're the only people that's teaching you how to go up on the side of the business and run with the business as opposed to you know, being part of the rate relay. Uh, we, we're on the side of the business running with it and creating value that is value for everyone in the whole ecosystem. And so that, sure. that becomes important. See, you know, he's golden, y'all. That's why he's on here, man. Like he's golden. He know what he's talking about. See, this is the thing, y'all. Like when you're, I don't know if y'all ever bought, uh, oh, ooh, a good example, man. Have you ever bought a clunker before? Like a lemon, That's like a, a bad car. You knew that you can get a car for two to $5,000. So all you was thinking about was trying to get the cash for that car. And you were so excited that you came up with the cash for that car that you was like, I right, well, whatever else is, is wrong with it. Like I, I could I could deal with that. Whatever. I, you know, I need a car. That's kind of how it is when you're looking for these businesses. You just want so badly 
to own a business, to say that you own a business, that you'll come up with the cash, but you are, you're rushing. When you, when you're coming up with the cash, most people are rushing when they're coming up with the cash. But if you're thinking on terms of leverage, you take your time, right? You're like, okay, I want to do this because leverage just, leverage implies safety, right? Leverage implies uh, no risk. But cash is in the in the in the in the world. We think that cash is no. I don't want to use my card and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Ca cash is not the safe option when it comes to a purchase like this. Like this, right. leverage is the safest option because, like he said, you're looking at how much that company is worth, how it's listed. But things are going to change when you acquire the company, Absolutely. right? So you can't look at it in turn. You need to like save a penny for a rainy day. I'm not going to put all my cash into this when it's things that's going to happen that's unforeseen. That's the point, guys. Like it's going to be some cu uh, some customers that's going to stop using it just because it's under new management. It's going to be some staff that might leave just because it's under new management. You might make some type of weird uh, uh, positioning de decision, change the mascot or whatever. And things could just 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 change, right? Or the people that they have uh, joint venture partnerships, once they figure out that you're ahead in the company now, they could dip. So you have to base your pricing, you, you know, like uh, how much you want to pay for that or how much risk you want to put in it based off of the changes that are uh, that could possibly happen, guys. Well, and when you're using that will not happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's inevitable. That is, it's you inevitable. Can, That's my favorite you word. have a crystal ball. And what you don't know is what the event will be. See, we didn't know that the event was going to be COVID, but some people knew that it was going to be some event. Yeah. You didn't know what it was going to be. You have a crystal ball. And I'm telling you, that crystal ball is, is like cloudy. It's real cloudy. You don't know what's behind it. But you know that there's something behind it. Yeah, and that's so. the most important thing. That yeah. is huge. You better understand that there's something behind it because it's not new utopia uh, behind there. It is there's something that's going to happen. And you just need to be prepared for that. But why exactly. go through all that? Why go through exactly. all that? When you don't have to, you don't have to have that nothing up my sleeve, that magic trick that's going to happen to you. And it's going to be black magic, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to go through that. The way we're teaching you, you, you run on the side of it as opposed sure. to run with it, you know? Sure. And so you got to understand that there is certainly risk there of of overpaying for the business and something is going to go wrong and the valuation you know just just take 30 percent of the cash flow uh, away from what they're saying because there there are lies and there are damn lies and when owners are selling businesses those are damn lies for sure for sure and i, I heard i saw a couple stories on flipper.com uh this is on a smaller scale uh where they'll buy the website and like 50 percent of the traffic will leave you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. so like they can't a lot of those a lot of business owners can't pass off everything to you. They some of them try, but a lot of them like either don't know how or don't want to pass off everything. Some of those, like I was just saying earlier, some of the let's say some uh 40 percent of the traffic is referral traffic. Mm -hmm. They were only referrals because they like the dude they were dealing with. So now exactly. that they don't know you, now they're not going to recommend people to come to you when you might have different policies from the last person that that owned the company and all of that stuff. They're not going to refer their best customers to you when they don't know you yet, maybe later down the line. But for right. some months to a year, you're going to miss out on all that traffic and sales. So those are our risks with, with, with this, guys. So don't think right. with your cash. Think with your leverage. Um, let me see. Yeah, I, I know majority of you guys heard of Ty Lopez before. And this is what me and Curtis is trying to get you all to see. Pay attention to waves. Um, uh, people are trying to eliminate risk. You want to make it to where you thrive in a recession. You don't even know what's going on. When I first moved out of the country to Mexico, when Snowbit was going on, we, I, I didn't have no, it didn't bother me at all. First of all, Mexico didn't shut down like the rest of the world. We were still partying and doing all that extra stuff. Mexico, they care about money. You hear me? They don't care about money. None of that stuff. Um, um, but other than that, like business didn't stop for me. Like we were still making a lot of money because we set up things uh, that weren't relying on on brick and mortar, physical stuff like that. So how me and Curtis teach you, you're going to have backup. You're going to build a digital twin. So even if you did decide to actually go ahead and buy the full actual uh, business, you know, the full entity, I'll give you an example. During Snowbit, 
what the restaurants that survived, what did they do? They they went they they some of them went to ghost kitchens. Some of them, you know, uh, went they to, opened they up got delivery. Really creative. They opened up delivery. They exactly. opened up delivery. They went. A lot of them were never online before. They didn't even have websites. But if they, mm-hmm. they had to sink or swim, they had to go where people were going to be. Since people weren't going to be in the streets anymore, they had to go where people are going to be. People are going to be on their phone the entire time. So they started putting all these restaurants and businesses on DoorDash, Uber Eats, uh, uh, Instacart, all of these places. And that's how they were able to survive. Why am I bringing this up? Because we're letting you know the digital side is stronger than the physical side. So mm-hmm. when you go into buying these businesses, automatically think on, okay, how quickly can I get them to let me plug in the 10 monetization methods and start building my digital assets, my digital twin? Because that's going to survive the hurricanes. That's going to survive the mudslides. That's going to survive the volcano eruptions. It's going to survive the tsunamis and tidal waves. The digital is. I mean, I can't see anytime soon unless Christ comes that the internet itself is going to be shut down. But businesses will be shut down physically. But guess what? Online sales skyrocketed every single time in some type of recession or where we can't go outside or some martial law or some bull crap where we can't do things physically. Digitally, we become way more capable. Right. Absolutely. So that takes the risk away. Risk away. Absolutely. All right. Let's move in. Okay. Inability to withstand economic downturns what's going on right right into what you were just saying it it just (laughs) aligns with just what you were saying your inability to i mean if you put all your money and you bought this business and you don't have digital assets and you don't you're you're not leveraged and i'm not just talking about some e-commerce website but a digital asset is you, you talked about referrals well the way we do referrals in terms of the militia is you know you don't you, you won't lose people with the militia the affiliate militia because those customers who are now part of your militia not your did not your uh, uh, affiliate army but those customers who are part of your militia are getting commission and they it doesn't matter to them quite honestly who's the owner because they are exactly. getting a commission from referring people over to you it doesn't matter to them what happened i'm getting paid um that's an asset so. the, the affiliate army is an asset your partnerships with compatible businesses that make a what we call the affiliate nation that's an asset right that's an asset. And, those in those um, allow you to put a hedge around the whole notion of an economic downturn. So whether we're driving people in or whether we're driving people uh, online to our our mobile websites, uh, our push our, our push notification our little websites, our our um, any assets that we're having, we are doing it digitally such that the if people are spending spending money and they will spend money. You know, no matter what the economic downturn is, unless we just have a crash and which, you know, we found that the United States, we had a crash and the United States government propped it up. So unless we have like a catastrophic crash and, and if we have that, nobody's going to, you know, uh, you know, nobody's going to be safe anyway. So unless we have that, barring that, you need to have the digital side going such that you can um weather the ups and downs of the normal economic downturns in which we know that they will be there anyway um so that that's that's hugely important let me just let me just read quickly the the piece where we talk about it and it says you know basically the our our limited opportunity as it relates to that would would be uh, relying on solely on cash that may that will save you makes you vulnerable Basically, it really, and I just talked about uh, during economic downturns, when having additional capital from loans could help weather the challenge. So if you have better valuation through your digital assets, you can have more access to capital, which could help you weather the downturns. And that's part of you know what we're talking about. But it all basically boils down to one thing. Do you have other assets that will continue to flourish regardless of the of the downturn? And can you leverage those assets, be it uh, a militia, an army, a nation, uh, a mobile website, a sales chatbot, um, you know, 
And I'm not talking about a customer service chatbot. I'm talking about a sales chatbot, uh, a, a, a cloned a website. Do you have those things? Do you have things in action that would allow you to upsell, downsell, cross-sell? Those are the things that we're talking about. Because if somebody comes into the into your <laughs> into your business, most likely that 12, 15, even $17 hour clerk is not going to be incentivized to upsell them. They're not going to be incentivized to downsell them. There, there, there's no incentive there for them because they're getting a, a paycheck regardless of whether you sell a hundred things or two things. For sure. So that's hey, he just dropped some bars for y'all. You hear me? All right, let's get into this next one. The next one, um, missed tax benefits. All right, now I'm not gonna dive too deep into this because I cannot give legal advice, and I'm not Wesley Snipes. They ain't gonna get me. Uh, <laughs> so what I will say is this. Well, everybody watching this know that there's benefits to tax benefits to owning businesses. And when you are a digital twin, when you have a digital twin and you become part owner of these businesses, you have write offs. OK, you have an abundance of write offs if you have multiple partners. What am I saying? OK, so let's say let's say that you are, are the, the average business owner. You own that one business. You only have the benefits of those write offs for that business. But how we're teaching you, you can have five partners within the next couple of months. Right. Mm -hmm. So the things that you're going to have to do to put in work and to help grow those businesses, those are going to be write offs as well that were funded by that partner, though. But since your name is on the agreement, you'll be able to write those off. You'll be right. able to claim that. But that's as far as your buddy goes with that right there. I'm not going to. Did you want to say anything about that? No, nope, that will leave it there. <laughs> I ain't you hear me? I'm trying to stay off radar. OK, so <laughs> let me go ahead with this limited scale of operations. So so I'll make this one quick, because if you have if you have a brick and mortar, you are limited by the amount of cash that you have, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And you are you will be limited amount by the you're limited by your how innovative you are. Whereas on the other side, from a digital perspective, and I'll, I'll just take the example of the militia, which is your customers, the, the database of customers, the uh, army, the affiliate army, which is the marketing professional marketers that you can attract to your business that will um, sell your irresistible offers and the affiliate nation, which are your partners malicious so you have you know if you if you're a massage therapist and you have an acupuncturist and a and a, a chiropractor and you guys come together and make a package you have access to all of those people that allows you to scale digital allows you to scale and you can scale across the world if you chose to and so What's you up? can't What's do up? that when you are when you put all your money in the business and then you have no more money you you know you you just can't do it with a brick and mortar and you are broke in essence. Exactly. Can I add something to that? Sure, please. Good thing about building the digital twin guys, right? The good thing about building the digital twin is that once it increases the, the revenue, you'll be able to scale offline as well. So remember, we said that we're teaching you like my agency, Profit Position and Agency. We specialize like we we decided, yo, I don't even want to be known as a marketing agency no more. But we might use marketing to do the goal, which is to uh, help companies expand, you know, company expansions are exits, right? Those are the two goals now for everything. Whatever marketing, partnerships, whatever we do is literally just for expansions and exits. I want y'all to think the exact same way. Knowing that, what are the fastest ways for you to expand? If it takes money, well, you should leverage something. Leverage the internet. Okay, you're not going to be able to speed up your sales offline. It's ex extremely difficult because you have to worry about, uh, it's too much you have to do to scale up offline. But online is right. as simple as me creating a downtown location. We can create a digital restaurant online downtown. So let's say that the, the main hub is located south side of St. Louis. OK, so now we made one online for delivery. It starts off delivery only because we don't have a physical location. So we start ranking for all of these keywords for delivery downtown. So now that location uh, uh, that is on the south side, they would lose money trying to come out there or whatever. So like Curtis was talking about, we'll have one or two staff members set up in a ghost kitchen that's downtown somewhere. And now they're building revenue from a location that doesn't even really exist except for online. So then they can take all the profits from that at the end of the year and get a physical location downtown. They would never have been able to do that if they just did offline. Right. Right. So, 
Yeah, we, let's move on, man. Let's move on. All right. Opportunity to negotiate better terms. Okay. Number 10. Last one. Well, when you're paying for cash, guys, the dream is 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 clean cut and it's a closed casket. When I say the dream, they don't know what you got. So negotiation is is like I said, it's limited. So let's say we're going biz buy sell and somebody is trying to sell their uh, pressure washing company for fifteen thousand dollars. I don't know. I, I never checked it out. <laughs> fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. OK, right. A lot of these people have no idea what is actually possible, which right. is why they're selling. Some of them not even 50 years old and are selling. So it's not really an age thing. They just don't know what to do. If you just come up with cash and that's all you have uh, uh, to offer, then that's it. You're just going to close that's that right. deal and that, that's going to be it. So no room for any flexibility or creativity, no way to keep them on. Majority of them, if you give them what they ask for, they're not staying on. But if you approach them with a more creative way, a more creative offer, like, yo, what if we expanded the business? Would you stay on there? What, what do you think about staying on if we expanded the business? Got multiple locations. You see what right. I'm saying? Like, then what? how would you feel? If how much, how much per month would it take for you to stay on? So you, you see what I'm saying? People aren't, aren't approaching these people like that. So now they're like, shit. <laughs> OK, so he's going to give me more money per month to stay on. Um, uh, I can still own a portion of the business and we can actually expand this and have multiple locations. Who is this guy? Right. So when you're just paying with cash and that's all you got, like that's that's all you can do. We don't want to pay with cash. <laughs> we want to approach them with a proposition that's going to make them richer than they ever thought with the company that they're trying to get rid of. Right. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So. Yeah, man, Absolutely. you get to negotiate better terms because I don't want, like Curtis said, pay to watch this, guys. If you come with cash, unless you drop in an, a, a, an astronomical amount more than they asked, most of them might stay on a month just to help you get operations in order. Majority of them are not going to stay on any longer than that from what I've seen in the listings and everything. But if they got some, an incentive, like what we're teaching you guys, then you will never have to, because I don't want to teach you to just buy a, a, a business and you have to take on the responsibilities and all that bull crap. Me and Curtis, we want the people to still run the business, right? You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Like We want to partake in the benefits of owning it, but we don't want to partake in the day-to-day -day operations and responsibilities, the, the, the firing, or even the hiring and, and all of that extra crap. They can keep all that, you hear me? But we want to partake in the profits and, and the exits and and the recurring, you know, passive incomes and the new income streams we add to it and everything. And we want to leverage them to grow that. Right. So, you know, Absolutely. you get to negotiate better terms when you have more to bring to the table. This is the benefit of being an agency first, guys. So if you're an agency watching this, you, like I said, have a superpower. It's just about you plugging in these 10 monetization methods and converting them to partners. If you're watching this right now. Is a link in the first pin comment and the description where me and Curtis will get on a two hour coaching session with you and we will teach y'all exactly how to plug in the 10 monetization methods, how to get them to agree to be a partner, how to get them to instead of selling the company off for cash. You know what? Let's go ahead and be partners in this and leverage them to grow that mug and you can build like build out franchises with this. OK, without even Absolutely. using your own money. So that's what's possible. But go ahead, Curtis. So we, we want to you, you want to transition now and talk about the five benefits. other benefits um, and we could do this fairly quickly. But I, I think, you know, we will start off with number one. I'll let you take number one, which is preserve pr preservation of cash flow. <laughs> well, uh, as you guys know, with like the regular way to do uh, seller financing, you're not putting any money down or you're not putting a lot of money down. Sometimes you can put a little bit and then use the, uh, you know, the monthly revenue or profits to pay them off over time until it's paid in full and all of that. Well, how we're trying to do it or teach you how, how to do it. We don't want you to have to put any money in. OK. Right. And uh, we don't want it to be uh, uh, the typical seller financing situation where you're you're the weak link. I think I need y'all to understand that you're the weak link when you get them to agree to seller financing. You're the weak link. You're f the, what? No offense to them, but the top people teaching you seller financing or they're teaching you to be the weak link. When you get somebody to agree to seller financing, typically they're desperate. That's why you got to go through so many people. That's why you got to ask so many people because they're desperate. So when you finally find somebody, they're like, fine, I just don't want this any anymore. But that's even worse because then they that fed up with it. Now you got <laughs> anyway. But my point is this. The more creative you are, the less you'll have to deal with desperate sellers. OK, right. 
So when we use creative seller financing, what it does is it, it, it allows the business owner to be excited again about their business. They're like, dog, so we can expand. We can have more locations. I can I can That's put some people in place uh, and, and I can stop being in the office every single day. Oh, snap. You're adding right. three more uh, in- revenue streams, like out- hands off. Oh, snap. You just eliminated majority of the overhead. Like, dog, they're going to be excited now to still be a part of the business. You see, so this is why we don't want to we don't want to just approach with the typical seller financing. It allows us to preserve our cash flow. Uh, the way we're doing it right now also allows them to save money as well. Right. Uh, as well as make a lot more money. So we'll move on. Negotiation flexibility. What's going on with that? So so you get I mean, when you have when you do it the way we're talking about, you get tremendous negotiation flexibility because we're not necessarily trying to do it the traditional way. And, you know, and like you said, we're not necessarily trying to work with seller, uh, desperate sellers, uh, as opposed to um, working with people who we can re-energize and they would, in essence, be able to go, okay, maybe with these other income streams, maybe maybe I can be flexible because now I have a totally different income stream. I have I have income streams coming from partnerships. I have income streams coming from um, mm. the militia, the the affiliate army, you know, the the nation. I have income streams coming from offers that I'm making that I'm push giving push notifications. I have these irresistible offers that we're making. I have income streams coming from things like AdSense and um, things like the, the changing out my POS system and a virtual gate. Way. I have all these other other opportunities. I don't have to be as stringent on the negotiations related to the, the your um, the brick and mortar, so to speak. For sure, uh, for sure. Yes, sir. So yes, it provides sir. room room for negotiations on the terms of the deal, and you can be very very creative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So increase access to opportunity. Okay. So. By leveraging seller financing, you may be able to gain access to a wider range of business opportunities that may, might be financially out of reach through conventional means. This can be particularly advantage. Uh, advent- I don't even know that word <laughs> for entrepreneurs looking to advantageous. Yeah, looking for, uh, for entrepreneurs looking to enter a new market or industry. So check this out: the benefits that you guys are going to get an agency to partner when you convert them to partners. The ten monetization methods. What is there? What's theirs is yours. Right. Okay. So you have increased access to opportunities because whoever they got in the black book is yours now. Oh, uh, their email list is yours now. Their phone SMS list is yours now. You're going to be able to remarket, resell to previous, current, and future customers that's paid already, and you get to participate in the money that come from that. So if it's a dentist, uh, and and you you uh, become a partner with the dentist, when you come in, you do a reactivation campaign. So you blast out. Uh, to the email list and the SMS list and you say you guys come in for a teeth whitening or oral uh, uh, screening or whatever, something like that, blah, blah, blah. They, I don't know how much that is. Let's say it's 80 to 150 bucks. How you worked it out with the the dentist is that you get 45% or, or 50% of that, right? So mm-hmm. all you did, you got access to their email and phone list and you blasted out something that they have to fulfill. Right. So five, 10 people come in you're getting to participate in the money that comes in from those bookings. Now, that's yep. not even the most powerful part. You own the data now because you're a partner too. So now you get to run ads and using those email and phone lists, using the budget of the business owner, and you run into new offers. Nothing that's going to be a conflict of yep. interest. You're not going to sell them to another, you know, send them to another dentist or anything right now. But you can uh, uh, market to them new electronic toothbrushes, uh, different services that they could come in, um, a home kit for Invisalign or, or or some type of teeth whitening laser home kit or something. You guys understand? So hopefully you guys get what I'm saying. By owning this data, you would never own the data if you were just getting them on retainer. They wouldn't allow you to do all of that stuff. They wouldn't allow you to message or email or DM their previous customers and stuff. Right. So now you get to collect all this data to be able to come up with new offers for them as well. That would be good for their people. So like you have access to all of these opportunities just because you're a partner with them. Right. Instead of just putting cash and buying the business 
and not knowing what to do, guys. This is why we want you to go through agency to partner instead of I know a lot of you aren't agencies. So go through agency to partner and you'll know all of this stuff that we're talking about to be able to plug that in and know what to do when you do get the list, when you do get the SMS, the email list and all of that stuff. Right. Um, and the oh, final. Yeah. So I, I wanted to say one more thing. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, no, never mind. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. All right. So alignment of interests. So when the when the seller provides seller finances, their interests uh, become more aligned with success of the business post sale, and that is very very true. Um, the last business we sold, uh, the the two owners, former owners, was really really interested because when we sold the business, they got paid their money, uh, and so they helped out quite a bit in the selling of that. Their alignment it led to a smoother transition for us then reselling the business. You know, eleven months later, and so. So they their vested interest was huge and, and and they you know we had situations where the owner the business wasn't doing as well and the former owner actually in a, in a different business came back to help uh, because again she had a vested interest in keeping the business going because we did a seller finance she did do take back and she wanted to make sure that she got her money and so she wanted to keep it going as opposed to you know doing anything else so they have vested interest in being able to to do that now the way we do it they have even more interest that was traditional that's the way uh cody sanchez or uh roland frazier or dan pena teaches you you know when you have seller finance they take back a note etc that's the traditional way the way we teach you they have not only more interest because Oh, by the way, let me step back. When when those sellers had to come back in and intervene, they sold for a purpose and they didn't want that business. So so they came back, but they came back reluctantly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I got to come back because my money is you know tied up in that, you know, in that business. They didn't want the business. That's why they sold. In this case, we rejuvenated their enthusiasm for the business because now they have a digital twin. Now they had a different source of revenue. Now the business can be fun again. And even okay. if they still want to continue to sell the business, it's at a much higher valuation than they ever thought that was possible based on where they are today. And that's very yes, important. Sir. Yes, sir. Man, so clap it up, man. I'm super happy we got Curtis on here today, man, because he's a busy guy. Um, and I know y'all are busy. So this is why we want you guys to leverage us. Everything we talk about is leverage, guys. Leverage, 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 leverage. That makes life easier. That makes making money easier. That makes uh, feeling free easier when you can leverage. All right. <clears throat> so cash is the lowest thing on the totem pole to leverage. This is why the title is the dumbest move you can do or uh, make is to buy a business with cash. That's like the lowest thing on a totem pole. Uh, you understand to, to do. So when you use your skills as an uh, a marketer or an advertising specialist and you use creative seller financing with that, guys, and you plug in the 10 monetization methods that we're going to teach you, then you can scale faster than you ever thought possible you can and you don't need a, a lot of clients no more the goal is for you to get a couple partners a few partners and plug in as many of these 10 monetization methods if one allow you to plug in five cool whatever the next one plug in four whatever the next one you plug in one whatever get to your 10 monetization methods you can add an extra 200k per month right you don't need to work with a million people. You don't have to stress yourself out of nothing. Plus, once you plug in these 10 monetization methods and you help them with the things that's going to be needed to increase valuation is is hands off from that point on. They just it, they just continue to grow and your passive income continues to grow as well as your reputation. You understand? So look, in the, look, y'all are grown men and women. Y'all have seen all of them out there. Uh, this is the first time you've been exposed to a different way of buying into businesses without using money. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you get to partake in the benefits of uh, the equity and everything, exits, expansions, all of that by being a real partner. Uh, uh, you know, you're getting all this extra data and everything for even businesses that you want to go and build on your own. You're going to have all of this insight into industries that you would not get if you were just an agency owner, right? 
So for those of you who are just into buying businesses, this will help you. And those of you who are agency owners that want to convert those clients into partners and scale, you can fire a majority of the clients that you have, keep just a couple, plug in the 10 monetization methods and make more than you would make if you kept 100 clients. Okay, so that's what agency to partner is about. We have lowered our coaching price. Okay, so right now we are making it easy for you. You get two hours with both of us personalized. We're going to go through all 10 of the monetization methods. You're going to leave with with documents and everything you need to get started right then and there. Even if you decide you don't want to go into the membership, we won't force you. We're going to make sure you have everything you need to actually go out, get started and buy a business without actually having to get cash to buy a business or even using your credit to buy a freaking business. This is the way. This is the way, guys. I have faith in you. I know y'all going to do the right thing. So go to the first pin comment, book a session with me and Curtis. This dude knows what he's doing. I know what I'm doing. Uh, Let us help you. All right. So we will see you guys in the next.